all men are mortal. Socrates is a man, and Socrates is mortal. Why do I feel like I can make something out of this? Something mathematical. For over 2000 years, mathematicians wrestled with Aristotle's logic, attempting to correlate using mathematical symbols and operators. The only person to come close was Gottfried Wilhelm von Leibniz, who dabbled with logic early in life, but then he went on inventing calculus at the same time as Isaac Newton. One man was up for the challenge. He transformed Aristotle's logic into something a child can understand. Lincoln, England, 1815. John Bull and Mary Ann Joyce were blessed with a son. They called him George. George Bull faced the world against all odds. Being part of Britain's rigid class structure, it deprived him from formal education as he was a son of a shoemaker and a former maid. However, his father had strong interests in sciences, math, and literature. He gave young George his first lessons, and George did not hesitate and mastered that path. He gave himself the type of education normally fit for the upper class. His studies included Latin, Greek, and mathematics. By 16, he taught in village schools in the West Riding of Yorkshire, and he opened his own school in Lincoln when he was only 20 years old to provide for his family. During his free time, he read mathematics journals in the Lincoln's Mechanics Institute. There, he also read Isaac Newton's Principia, Pierre Simon Laplace Traité de Mécanique Celeste, and Joseph Louis Lagrange's Mécanique Analytique and began to solve advanced problems in algebra. Confident in the symbolic reasoning I had derived from his mathematical investigations, he published in 1847 a pamphlet in which he argued persuasively that logic should be allied with mathematics, not philosophy. In 1849, Boole was appointed the first professor of mathematics at Queen's College, even though he had no university degree and constantly living in social and political turmoil. And in 1854, he published his masterpiece, An Investigation into the Laws of Thought, which he regarded as a mature statement of his ideas, how a human reasoning could be expressed using symbols of algebra. George Bull would abstract conventional algebra into four symbols. The first two are AND and OR operators, and the other two symbols might look like numbers, but they're not. The symbol 1 means the universe, and 0 means a class of nothing. So let us go back to Aristotle's example. Let P the class of all persons. M represents the class of mortal things, and S is Socrates. All persons are mortal in Boolean logic will be like the following. Meaning every person belongs inside the set of mortals. To say Socrates is a person, we have the following and the class containing Socrates lies entirely within the set of persons. And finally, by association and substitution, we get the final conclusion. The class containing Socrates lies within mortals, hence Socrates is mortal. Next year, he met his wife, Mary Everest, niece of Sir George Everest, the man who gave his name to the highest mountain, and got married in 1855. So Bull was was really um, the guy who uh, had this fantastic idea that we could study zeros and ones, and that would and 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 we could get a tremendous amount of mileage out of out of zeros and ones. So he writes this equation x squared equals x, and he knows that there's only two numbers that satisfy this equation, and they're zero and one. So now comes the punchline. Let us conceive then of an algebra in which the symbols x, y, z, and so on admit indifferently of the values 0 and 1 and of these values alone. And there it is. The key ideas that made uh, Boolean algebra relevant for engineering uh, was Claude Shannon. We fast forward to the United States in the 1930s, where now 
You can call from coast to coast, but there was a problem. Noise At MIT, a young mathematician, Claude Shannon, decided to improve telecommunication by eliminating that noise. Shannon was working on the telephone switching circuits, and the only way to connect calls between two parties was to find the right switch by trial and error. In the days before the information age, we had a big problem with information itself. Any time you try to send a message from one place to another, something always gets in the way. The original signal is always distorted by noise of some kind. Wherever there is signal, there is also noise. He wanted a solution. As a result, he thought it's all about probability. And if trial and error was random and unpredictable, then what is the simplest probability? It is head or tails. What is the simplest answer to any question? True or false? On and off, one and zero. And suddenly, Shannon realized something that nobody else had seen. Boolean algebra was the perfect tool for designing these circuits. He dusted off Bull's work and started connecting the dots. His reasoning was that as long as the message's noise doesn't flip a one into a zero, the message survives, becoming noise resistant. If you encode a message in just the right way, it will work against the noise and distortion and so on, which you might have in that channel. And in 1938, he wrote his masters on this connection entitled A Symbolic Analysis of Relay and Switching Circuits. Shannon was only 22 at the time. His reasoning was the following. Let us consider zero as light off, one as light on, and let's see the circuit. Only when both switches are closed, we get a one, and the rest of the states we get a zero. As a result, we present this truth table. This will be abstracted to something called an AND gate, one of many logic gates. Another logic gate is the OR gate, which has the same circuit but different wirings. However, the only time the light is off is when we have two zeros and a minimum of one switch is required to turn on the light. In addition, we have the NOT gate, which only negates the values, a zero becomes a one and vice versa. The different wirings of these logic gates gave us adders, adding zeros and ones. But how do we store the values? Flip-flops, better known as memory, responsible for storing a one, basically an electron. And finally, the control unit, the ALU and program counter to fetch and encode the incoming stream of data. Fit the pieces together and you've got yourself a general purpose computer. Nobody had shown with Shannon's clarity and rigor that electrical engineers could use all of the tools of Boolean algebra to design circuits. Because if you can simplify a Boolean expression that describes a network, you can simplify the network accordingly. Well, his master's thesis was on Boolean algebra, which is kind of an abstract field, but it's really uh, the basis for the design of uh, computer circuits. He created the field of digital logic. Now, if you think about that, that sounds like a very simple thing to say now, but what does logic have to do with digital? Logic is uh, reasoning uh, correctly from premises. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a subject in philosophy. He showed that and, or, and not, the simple connectives from theoretical Boolean algebra, could be used to build electronic circuits, which, which led in no small part to the uh, invention of the computer. In late 1864, Bull walked in heavy rain from his home to Queen's College Cork, a distance of three miles and lectured wearing his wet clothes. He soon became ill, developing pneumonia, and in December 1864, he passed away. We are standing on the shoulders of giants and we take it for granted. George Boole was the only one who proved Aristotle's syllogism mathematically, proving Socrates is indeed mortal. But by his death, George Boole left a legacy that made him immortal.